Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing Pipette Baby. This is a brand I've gotten a lot of requests to review, uh, including their sunscreen. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'd love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. If you're not familiar, Pipette is under the umbrella of Amaris companies, which also include Biosance. And like Biosance, all of the uh, Pipette products contain squalane, a lightweight emollient that is kind of fast absorbing and gives the skin overall a nice kind of glow to it. So that's gonna be the theme of all of these products. They all have squalane in them. And similar to the Biosance marketing, this brand markets itself as like clean, green, free of like toxins, which we all know is, you know, and if you're curious about that, I do have other videos explaining why clean beauty is nothing and explaining why the environmental working group and the Think Dirty app are not reliable sources of information. All right, that being said, this brand does have actually many good products. Now, as I've said in other videos, you do not have to be a baby to use baby skincare products. More often than not, baby skincare products, they keep the ingredient list pretty short and free of common irritating ingredients and free of common allergens, which is the case with these products. They generally have a pretty short ingredient list. First thing I'm gonna review is probably why you clicked into this video. It is the Mineral Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50. This is a zinc oxide sunscreen. That's the active sunscreen ingredient. Zinc oxide sunscreens, they are very good for people who have really sensitive skin. They tend to not burn or sting. Uh, they're gentle around the eyes. However, they do leave a white cast. Now, this particular sunscreen was popularized very quickly on social media because they put out an ad showing a black family applying this sunscreen in an Instagram, in an Instagram ad. And it looked like there was no cast when they applied it. But if you look very carefully, they barely applied anything in the ad, which I think is a little misleading. In my experience, this sunscreen does leave a white cast. Um, for me personally, it's not bad whatsoever. It's barely noticeable on my skin, but it's definitely going to show up on medium to deep skin tones, brown skin and deeper when you apply a proper amount. Unfortunately, most people don't apply enough sunscreen and that's one of the main pitfalls of sunscreen is that people under apply it. But if you actually apply it to all surfaces as you should, including around your eyes, to the sides of the face, the neck, um, unlike in the ad, you're gonna get a white cast. It even leaves a white cast on my skin. The other thing about the sunscreen that I think will either go over well with some people, uh, but potentially will not go over so well with other people, is that it does make your skin look pretty shiny. It's very emollient. Some people love that. People with oily skin do not typically care for that. They do not wanna look shiny. So this definitely is on the shiny side. It is not water resistant, so that means that you uh, don't wanna rely on it if you're gonna be outdoors, participating in outdoor activities all day, especially if you're sweating, working out. Uh, definitely not if you're gonna be you know, out by the pool or whatnot, because it's not gonna stay on while you're in. The spread of the product is very good. It spreads onto the skin well, and it doesn't transfer around. Now, if you have facial hair, you will see a white residue with this sunscreen on your facial hair. It doesn't bother me that you can see it like in my eyebrows, but if you have a lot of facial hair, that might, you know, be something you're not you're not down with. For me, like I said, the cast is not too bad. I think you could get away camouflaging the cast with makeup. I do think that makeup would go on pretty well over this, although it is a little on the greasy side. So depending on the formulation of your makeup, you may find that certain types of makeup just don't go over well on top of this. Um, that's really hard to say. Makeup's a pretty broad category for which you guys who follow me know I have very little to no experience. But I do think if you have a medium to deep skin tone, this cast you could camouflage pretty readily with a with a foundation or you know mineral tinted powder or something like that. Um, that also might help reduce the shine a little bit, but it's $16.50, which I don't think is too bad. It's marketed for babies. So some of these things that I point out obviously are not really a concern, like, you know, showing up on facial hair or putting makeup on over it and that, that kind of thing. Overall, I really like this sunscreen. I would happily repurchase it. 
and use it myself, but I want you guys out there with deeper skin tones to realize you're gonna get a cast with this. As a matter of fact, the Biosance sunscreen uh, leaves less of a cast on my skin. I'll insert a clip here of that sunscreen going on my skin. Leaves less of a cast than this, and that sunscreen actually a viewer sent me and a viewer sent it to me and it had been open and she said i bought this for myself i used it but it's too i have a deeper skin tone i can't use it it leaves too much of a cast so comparing that to this tells me that for people with medium to deep skin tones you're definitely going to get a cast if you apply this properly whether or not it's acceptable to you i think it varies from individual to individual some people with a medium to deep skin tone they're they're okay with it but i know a lot of you guys out there would be pretty unhappy with this Comment below though, if you've tried it, what your experience with it was, I would love to know. Beyond the active ingredient, zinc oxide, which is what's giving you the sun protection. Uh, this also has um, some antioxidants, ethyl ferulate and wild gooseberry extract. Antioxidants and sunscreens, they're fine. They you know, are put there with the idea that they might scavenge free radicals. But in reality, sunscreens form a film and they don't, that film forming of the sunscreen doesn't really allow the antioxidants to get into the skin. So I don't know, they're kind of just add-ons, <laughs> if anything. So there's that. Otherwise, I, I don't have a problem with this. It's good, I like it, but with the warning that it does leave a white cast. All right, moving on to the shampoo and wash. This product, is $12 and uh, they I got the fragrance free one of course they also have a vanilla scented one and a ylang ylang scented one with like essential oils now you guys have heard me talk about how uh, fragrance you know it can be irritating for some people it's less of a problem in wash off forms um, and you know essential oils even if it's natural fragrance it's no safer than it's you know the risk is not any different between natural fragrance and synthetic fragrance as far as potential to cause irritation or allergy. And overall, this is a very good basic cleanser that works really well on the face to remove their sunscreen, which is not water resistant. It also works well to remove other sunscreens that I've tried it with that are water resistant and have too much of a problem. It removes mascara pretty well and it doesn't burn or sting in the eyes. It also works well as a gentle shampoo. For those of you with more textured hair, you may consider trying this. It doesn't have any um, sulfates, which can be a little too drying for people with textured hair and end up leading to breakage. So definitely try this out um, and try it out as a shampoo. It works quite well for mild scalp cleansing. But for me personally, I find that this is basically the same as any other baby wash shampoo mambo combo that I have tried and reviewed for you guys before. The CeraVe baby, the Eucerin baby, very, very similar. It's got plant-derived glycolipids too, which are gonna kind of help combat some of the drying effects of just the action of cleansing. And it's got, uh, as far as the um, cleansing agents, it has decil glucoside and sodium laurel lactylate, which are very mild, gentle cleansing agents that can be used to cleanse the scalp, the hair, and the body. And so they're not drying or super irritating. Because the surfactants are so mild in this, if you use a lot of hair care products, don't expect that this is going to remove product buildup. You need a clarifying shampoo for that. I have a video on some of my favorite clarifying shampoos, by the way. But otherwise, this is really good for basic scalp cleansing. You guys know I shampoo my hair every day because I work out, I get sweaty and whatnot. And I have actually really enjoyed this. It's great, as I said, to the face, as a face wash, as a body wash. I thought it did a decent job removing water resistant sunscreen as well without necessitating a lot of scrubbing and rubbing. Um, However, if you wear a lot of heavy makeup, you may find, of course, that you're gonna to need to use a dedicated cleansing balm or cleansing oil or makeup remover prior to using this in order to really get that stuff off. But for just everyday face cleansing, it's very good. It's not drying. If you have sensitive skin, rosacea, eczema prone skin, this would be a good cleanser to consider um, for you. Um, I actually really liked it overall and would recommend it. $12, not too, too bad. Product number next is the Baby Lotion. I have used this for several weeks now and I like it, but it doesn't like jump out at me as like the most remarkable lotion I've ever used. It's $10, which is not a bad price, but it's 
oh, let's see, six ounces, $10, not too bad of a price, I guess. Uh, free of fragrance, you can get this in a calming aroma scent, which I think is a blend of rose and patchouli. Um, so that might be something you enjoy, but again, fragrance and leave-on products, more of a risk for irritation and allergies developing. But you know, that's kind of your own decision to make if you wanna, if you wanna go that route. Um, this like, again, all of their products has squalane in it, which is very lightweight and uh, kind of fast absorbing. Unlike the sunscreen, this doesn't make the skin greasy. It actually is really nice as far as making the skin feel soft, smooth, kind of giving it a nice, healthy glow but it doesn't really have a significant occlusive component to it to really trap in water. So in other words, if you are dealing with acutely dry, inflamed, irritated skin, I would not gravitate towards this lotion or really any lotion in general. Lotions tend to be just too lightweight for that situation. And this is not going to get you the remedy healing that you need in that scenario of an impaired moisture barrier. Otherwise, it's nice, it's very lightweight, it's an emollient-based product with that squalane, and it also has um, pomegranate sterols, which are you know antioxidants, so you get some pollution defense in theory, but again, don't, don't wrap yourself around those claims because they're not that easy to substantiate. Uh, and it's got ceramides, which can help with the moisture barrier. Overall, I like this, but like I said, it didn't like jump out at me as, ooh, I need to rebuy this or something. I will use it and use it up. I like it. It makes the skin feel soft, but I wouldn't, you know, bend over backwards to repurchase it. Another thing you can use this for, which you can use any body product this way, is for the face. It's a facial moisturizer. So you can try it that way. I did that, found it was fine. Uh, kind of gave me a nice glow, not greasy. And uh, so there's that option as well. All right, but a product from them that you should definitely check out as opposed to the lotion, if you are somebody who's dealing with acutely dry dermatitic skin or you've got eczema, is their eczema lotion. It's actually very similar to Aveeno's eczema baby lotion. It's got colloidal oatmeal. Colloidal oatmeal is packed with beta-glucans, which are humectants and have anti-inflammatory properties. And oats also have avananthramides, a type of antioxidant that can fight off free radical damage, which is really important when you're trying to repair dry, damaged skin, you're dealing with an impaired moisture barrier. And it's got shea butter. Now shea butter is gonna help trap water in. That's something that was lacking in the lotion. So it's got that shea butter to really keep water in the skin, reduce trans epidermal water loss. And it's also got uh, ceramides in it, like the lotion, which help kind of clue the moisture barrier into healing. And it's got some wax alcohols in it. It's got satyral alcohol, which are a fat, those, those are fatty wax alcohols that kind of help with moisture retention as well. This overall is a very good product. You could consider this a cruelty-free alternative to many of the Aveeno Baby products with colloidal oats or Eucerin's Baby Eczema Cream uh, is sim similar. It has oats, ceramides, nice thick occlusive cream. So this is kind of an alternative to them. $12, not too bad of a price point. Uh, and again, you don't have to be a baby to use it. And with any body product, go ahead and try it as a facial moisturizer. You would derive the benefits from the oats and what have you. Um, all right, moving on to the next product is the Baby Balm. This is an ointment. You can buy it, I bought the pot, but you can also buy it in a stick for easier application. The pot is $13 and the stick is $9. This product is really nice for the lips, for reducing dry chap lips. It's also really nice for um, anybody dealing with windburn. If you're someone who enjoys slugging and you're looking for a vegan, cruelty-free alternative to Vaseline, you might elect this product. It's not going to reduce trans epidermal water loss like petrolatum. Nothing compares to petrolatum, but this is an alternative. It's got berry wax in it instead, which can help reduce water loss from the skin. It's got those pomegranate sterols, which in theory might help fight off free radicals, although to what extent they are actually going to be delivered in this type of vehicle to the skin is difficult to, uh, to know. I shared with you guys recently how I had developed 
a little patch of dry skin on my upper eyelid from that Paracone MD salicylic acid product that had migrated. Um, this product actually is very helpful, has been very helpful in um, soothing that, remedying it, and getting the skin back to working order. Um, so it's a nice balm. I, my personal preference is to use petrolatum. I know that that works better. It has the best rate of reducing trans epidermal water loss, but this is a nice alternative. And I think another situation where you might try and use it is if you've got chapped cheeks. This is particularly common in little children. Interestingly enough, um, the moisture barrier um, and stratum corneum development are slowest on the cheeks. That's why in babies with eczema, that's one of the first places that, that'll show up most classically is on the cheeks. Babies in general are more prone to dryness on the cheeks. So this would be a good product to slather on there to kind of help remedy that. Um, overall, it's very good. I like it. I don't think it's too expensive for what it is and it should last a very long time. It also could be used in the diaper area to heal, you know, to help with healing of diaper rash. Very good overall as a nice thick balm. Product number six is definitely one to consider. I think it's really a cool product. It's their cream to powder. I like this product quite a bit. It's $10, what the heck is it? It is a moisturizer with tapioca starch and arrowroot powder, which will help absorb excess moisture from the surface of the skin. This is something you need to try if you deal with uh, chafing between the thighs. If you have uh, areas of redundant skin, skin on skin contact, we get a lot of chafing, rubbing, breakdown of the moisture barrier and irritation. This is a wonderful product to use. Yeah, that arrowroot starch and the tapioca starch can help absorb uh, moisture from the skin. It's intended obviously for the diaper area for babies to absorb uh, moisture that can cause breakdown of the skin barrier. And it's also intended for like babies, you know, as they start teething, especially they're drooling a lot and that pools in their neck folds, they get a lot of irritation here on the anterior neck. But adults deal with this in other areas like around the mask area currently now that we're all wearing masks. Also, you know, between the inner thighs, between the, under the armpits and women under the breasts. These are all kind of similar situations where a product like this could potentially be very helpful for you in terms of absorbing that excess moisture off the surface of the skin that would otherwise break down the skin barrier and lead to more irritation, dryness, and skin problems. Also put you at risk for uh, skin infections like a candida yeast infection on the skin. Water on the surface of the skin or bodily fluids, liquid, it actually breaks down the moisture barrier and becomes very, very irritating, especially if you have uh, a lot of frictional forces, like in the case of a baby from the diaper, it becomes very, very irritating. Um, but your skin has, you know, is loaded with, with water and you wanna keep that in there. And so you wanna use something that's gonna lock your moisture in and keep water out, if that makes any sense. Uh, Cause water left on the skin is gonna be too irritating. The mango seed butter acts as a skin protectant and will reduce water loss out of the skin and prevent irritating things from getting into the skin. I, overall, this, this product is stand out and I'm surprised it hasn't gotten more mention. It's really, you know, a novel formulation. And I think it can help a lot of people out who deal with irritation in skin folds. Um, in areas where you have a lot of sweat. They also have water wipes, which, you know, for adults, there's really not much need to use these and I try and encourage you all not to use them. But they have their place, they have their role as far as being convenient and for babies, of course, you know, it's hard to tell a parent to not use them because Hello, like breastfeeding infants poop a lot. And I mean, you know, you do what you have to do to, to stay sane and to keep the skin, the child's skin clean. Water wipes, baby wipes, they can be incredibly irritating, especially for baby skin, which is more fragile. And a lot of them have certain preservatives that often are irritating. What I like about these though, is that they're actually, uh, in addition to being free of fragrance and common irritating ingredients, they're actually very, very soft. So that is a nice feature of these wipes, but I typically recommend the amino sensitive baby wipes. They're kind of similar to these and honestly they're priced about the same. These are $5 for 72 count. And that soft cloth is really important. Irritating rough materials just further cause irritation. So I think for a water wipe for babies, theirs are actually pretty good. The next product is their baby oil. The baby oil is free of fragrance. It is 
made with squalane as opposed to traditional baby oil that you buy in the store is mineral oil. Now, I've got videos explaining that mineral oil is not the devil. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it gets an unnecessary bad rap, likely because of the environmental not working group. Um, but yeah, mineral oil on the skin is more than safe, wonderful ingredient. We use in dermatology all the time, fine for babies, but uh, to each their own if you want to avoid it. Squalane is a nice alternative, and unlike mineral oil, I have to say, it has its advantages in that it doesn't leave that greasy residue, which, you know, is desirable. Using an oil, it's kind of a matter of personal preference. It suffers the limitations in that it's not really a total moisturizer as far as the ingredients. You know, the humectants are not quite there. It's not quite occlusive. It mostly just softens skin edges and kind of helps give the skin a more luminous glow. It can help with dryness, but not to the degree of like a full-blown moisturizer, especially a, a heavier cream. It's really gonna lock in hydration. Oils by themselves, they don't really do that. But a lot of people really enjoy using oils in their skincare. I happen to think oils are especially good uh, if you're dealing with dry skin and you apply an oil before getting into the shower, it can help reduce the burden of water loss and irritation from the act of bathing. And so it's kind of nice to use it in that regard. But a lot of people like putting squalane on their skin first thing in the morning. They find that that luminous glow is just really nice. And because it doesn't leave a greasy residue, typically, you know, your makeup goes on over, over it really well. The parent company of Pipette, you know, they also make Biosance products, you know, they also are Biosance. Biosance has squalane, uh, a squalane oil that's very popular and it's very expensive. Try the baby oil as an, an ex, uh, you know, a less expensive alternative. Same squalane and, you know, so definitely try it. I think it's a good product and I think you can actually get it for free from Pipette if you buy like $30 worth of products. Um, so, you know, you might want to try it out if you're somebody who enjoys oils in your skincare. For me, I just don't. Now, now, those are the products from the baby line. One point I will make is I'm gonna get questions, are these acne safe? Uh, whether or not a product is gonna aggravate somebody's acne just kind of comes down to you as the individual. There's nothing about an ingredient list that predicts whether or not an individual is going to have a flare of acne. Some people are very sensitive to certain ingredients like coconut oil. These products, they don't have coconut oil in them. They do have derivatives of coconut oil in them, um, but they don't have coconut oil. So that association with coconut oil, it, it might not necessarily be the case with all coconut derivatives in terms of aggravating acne. So you don't have to like assume that these products are not gonna be safe for you if you've had issues with coconut oil in the past. Some people with acne get along swimmingly with squalane-based products, others do not. And again, it's a matter of the individual. If you have found in the past that squalane-based products aggravate your acne, stay away from these. They're not going to help you. These products, however, they are very friendly for folks with dry skin, sensitive skin, or rosacea. Um, there's that. As far as medium to deep skin tones, there's nothing in these products that you have to worry about, um, you know, being uh, something that's going to worsen post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or cause excessive irritation. That being said, of course, you can develop irritation to any product, but overall, these they have a very short ingredient list. They're what you would consider hypoallergenic, although I recently did a video debunking that claim, so make sure you check that out to really understand what that means. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, you know, low risk products is what I'm getting at. And for people with medium to deep skin tones, if you know you just want some basic products to keep your skin healthy and not put yourself at that risk for the hyperpigmentation issues that can come with a lot of irritating products, these definitely would be good. Um, that being said, you know, be wary of the mineral sunscreen as far as the cast. Uh, if you are not happy with any, any hint of a cast in your sunscreen, don't fall for that Instagram Instagram ad that they put out of the black family putting this on because they were not putting on very much at all. You need to put, you know, technically two milligram per centimeter square, uh, but you definitely need to be covering all surfaces. Some people assume that I just put too much on, but I really put a very consistent, even good layer on to all surfaces. Oh, I didn't mention, um, but this brand is cruelty-free and vegan. I actually like this brand overall. I think one thing that would make me detest this brand and tell you guys to skip and like it's overhyped is if they were charging what m many brands do, charging like $68 
for a moisturizer, those kind of price points for these products, I would be like, geez, oh geez. Uh, but so far they're not. Let's hope they stay that way. Uh, relatively affordable. I think these are good. And I think they're especially good for those of you who just want some basic skincare products that are vegan and cruelty free. Comment below, have you tried any of these? Have you tried the sunscreen? Please share in the comments how it was for your skin. That is really what people are probably coming here looking for is the sunscreen. And so if you guys could also share your experiences in the comments, that would really help out a lot of people and I would appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.